weeks saw in two wrestlers. First, the U.S. champion Jimmy Snuka, along with his manager Gene Anderson. Angelo Mosca must be going nuts. He must have been hit in the head a few times too much. What he wants now is to wrestle the superfly, the United States champion, and who? Gene Anderson. Why? Because he says I interfered his matches. That's ridiculous. And the people that were in the Maple Leaf Gardens the last time know it's ridiculous. I don't have to interfere in no matches where the Superfly is involved because he beats his man soundly when he crawls in the ring. The only thing Angelo Mosca has to do is cry. He's crying a little bit because he was humiliated in front of the thousands of people in the Maple Leaf Gardens the last matches. So what is he trying to do? He's trying to save face by wanting to wrestle the United States champion, the Superfly, and me, Gene Anderson. It's ridiculous. Angelo Mosca, you must be going a little kooky. There's no way, there's no way that you can beat the Superfly, let alone the both of us. So, April 13th, Angelo Mosca's the time. And of course, to Gene Anderson. Well, this is the entire cane. It's not put together, as you can see. And the thing that excited me the most, there's some fan mail here. The first time I ever actually got any fan mail. I got some bad letters before. But the first time anybody ever said, we like what you did, just keep up the good work. All right, and superstar for all of the fans that don't know exactly what you did, I think we could bring them all up to date on that. Okay. He's got a piece of film here. I hope you can show it now and explain us what has actually happened. All right, fans, and uh, David, this is uh, action that took place last week, That's as a matter right, of fact. The, uh, film of Gene Anderson and what he did and what the superstar did to Gene Anderson and his whole crew. All right, and superstar, we're going to watch that right now. Let's see it along with you, fans. Well, I'm in action earlier, and i got to admit, whenever the superstar is in the ring, you're going to see plenty of action. There's you know, no I've doubt about it. I've this belt for a number of months now. I made a promise to oh, myself. I got a... Wait a minute. Here's Sock. Hey, listen. You know, you're not in the, listen, the class of the world's champions. Man. I watched you last week, you're a little soft. Move on. What? Listen, hey, this is my interview it. time. He stepped in my interview time before. I don't like this idea. Oh. Yes, that got rid of With him. Now he's the champion. I want to that, talk a few things. Him, the greatest wrestlers of tag team today. That's a low. That was a sneak. <laughs> and here's the superstar now. And he's going to get Gene Anderson. And just break that cane right over Anderson. And he's got Anderson now down on the floor, just stomping and kicking away at him. All three of them went down. Gene Anderson stretched out down on the floor, the superstar, standing right over him, just kicking away at him. And Stevens and Snooker now are trying to get him out of here. These guys are the scum. And I'm not saying I'm the best wrestler. I didn't like Gene Anderson. When I came back to this area, the first thing that Gene Anderson said was team up with me and I'll make you a champion. David with those hands taped up. Uh, he's in the ring ready to go. And by the crowd here in our TV auditorium, I can tell that Mulligan was coming in. And here's Duncan. And David, he attacked Mulligan as he was getting into the ring, as he was coming through the ropes. And he has really thrown some rights at him. There's a big one now for Mulligan. Boy, he's throwing right, heavy right hands to the head. And Mulligan now, and boy, David, he is really landing some blows now in the face of Duncan. Hard blows. This is just a... When you talk about the brass duck match, which is what this is, it is just a brutal match. Yes, it is. You must they realize... get there and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and right. slug it out. There, there hands are taped to the point that they're they don't give they're very hard it's just like using a pair of nuts in their hands they just don't give both right. men are showing the wear and tear of this fight even as big and as strong and powerful as these men are the tremendous blows that they throw and land at each other how long how long can they take it and how long can it continue 
Ugunka, who is the Texas champion, and he just brought back the trophy to prove it, that he, he won the tournament, and he won the trophy. Duncan was on the ropes, though. As you fans can tell from their, from their face, their heads, they're taking an awful lot of punishment. Now you see why well, they're a hard right hand for Mulligan, and Duncan went down on one knee. As they just stand toe to toe and slug it out. David, let's get us a, a microphone over here because right now here is uh, NWA President Jim Crockett right here. Wrestling is an extremely rough sport, but Brass Knuckles is, uh, it, this has gone too far between Mulligan and Duncan. We're going to take it off the air now. Uh, this is a family sport. This, this is too brutal. I, I agree with you. We can get the director to take the match off the screen right now. All right, uh, David, uh, right, Kevin, I, hope, I hope our director heard off. that upstairs. All right, fans, and there you have it, and that was it, and you can see why we had to take it off. Uh, Jimmy Snooker and the Iron Sheik are going to team up. Right, we're going to see them in a tag team match, and what a rough, tough combination they are. Don't forget the Gene Anderson That's right, right. you them. can't forget Gene when you talk about the Iron Sheik and Jimmy Snooker. All right, and Jim Brunzel also is going to be here this week. That's right, that's going to be very good. And Ric Flair was supposed to wrestle on the program, but he has been injured. He will be here, though. But, uh, David, uh, he will not wrestle. And I think we want to tell all the fans right here, last week in a match, Rick got his nose broken. That's so correct. he's going to be here, but he's not going to wrestle. That's uh, right. That's right. Then we're going to have Sweet Ebony Diamond. He's going to wrestle. And we're also going to see the World Tag Team Champions, Rick Steamboat and Jay Youngblood. That's right. That's going to be a very good to see them back on our television program. I just noticed... Uh, I can't believe this. Greg look, Valentine look, out here. Uh, look, look at that. Look at that attire. Greg, I... I tell you, that's uh, that's the fanciest outfit I think I've ever seen. That's what you call class. That is really well, class. Thank you, Greg. David. That's because I am class. From my head to my toe, I'm the man now. You know, I want to say one thing. Right now, I'm pursuing the United States title. I have talked this over with my partner, Ray Stevens, and he said, go ahead. He gives me his best wishes. And I want to say he's the most fantastic partner I have ever had. And I'm going to miss him by my side in the corner when I'm in that ring. Now, what I would like to say is, Ric Flair, where is Ric Flair? Rick, Rick got hurt in a match last week, got his nose broken. You know what? I'm the man that broke Ric Flair's nose, and it makes me feel good. Because for six years, six long years, Ric Flair has ruled the roost around here. He's been the United States champion four or five different times. World Tag Team Champion only because of me. I had to live in his shadow. That's right, I had to live in his shadow, but I was a tough one. I was the one that always took the fall. And Flair knows that. Now, Ric Flair, what do you say with your broken nose? How, how does it feel? Can you imagine, Bob Cole, what it feels like to have a broken nose, to have a hundred stitches across yeah, your face, face across your forehead, across yeah. your lips? I'm, I'm Every... It's not any ordinary broken nose. Mr. Valentine did do a very good job. I, I always do a good job. Can you imagine, Ric Flair, waking up every morning Especially after he takes that big nose guard off. You know he's got to wear a nose guard now for a month. But what's going to happen when he takes that off and finally has to stare in the mirror and see all those stitches and all those scars and see that nose is crooked now. That once perfect, I must admit it was a big nose, but it was straight. But now it's crooked, Flair. And every time you look into the mirror, you're going to see my face. Because I'm the one that outsmarted you, Flair. That's right. That's why I'm the man now. Because I outsmarted the nature boy. And the girls, they're not going to want you anymore, Flair. You're not the nature boy to them anymore. You can't be the nature boy with scars all over your face. You can't be the great one with scars all over your face. Your face looks like hamburger now, He's Flair. He's going to heal, Greg. He's going to heal. I'm telling you what, Bob Cottle. That gold, that United States championship is almost like right there in my hands. 
Because as soon as I get into the ring with Ric Flair, I'm going to rip that guard off. I'm going to take that nose guard off. And then I'm going to pound. I'm going to drop the bionic elbow. I'm going to hurt that nose even more. Can you imagine? All Ric Flair is going to be able to do is give up. I want to say one closing to what he wants. Uh, okay, yeah. Go ahead. Because we'll hear from Rick. You go ahead. You're not going to hear from him because he can't hardly talk. I just want to tell you one more thing. Girls, all the girls have been chasing Ric Flair, and you're all worried. You're crying about the nature boy because his face is mutilated now. I want to let you know that right here, put this microphone over so they can hear me, that I am the man now. And you can come over on my side. You understand? Because I'm the man. I'm the nature boy. Ric Flair is a has-been. He is decked out with a girl on each arm and a championship belt, Greg Valentine. I'll tell you what, Bob Cottle, you may ask what I'm doing dressed like this and my two young lovely ladies here, but I'm celebrating, you understand? I'm celebrating because just what you said, I am now the proud owner of this coveted gold belt. I want to say one thing else. This belt still smells like Ric Flair. Still got his name across the front, so I'm going to have a belt made for me by the NWA. It's going to be presented to me. It's not even going to be the same color, you understand, but it's going to represent the same thing. The most prestigious belt in all the land, the United States Championship. Now, I want to say one thing else. I haven't got too much time to stay around here because, uh, my ladies and I are going to go out for a nice candlelight dinner, you understand, the champagne. We are celebrating, you know that? And it's tomorrow, we are heading down to the beach. I got my 36-foot Chris Craft Scorpion, I'm telling you. We're going to have a good time. I'm not worried about challengers right now. I'm not accepting any challengers because I'm just going to enjoy what this brings me, and that's Lots of money. Yeah, we're the print benefits here. Yeah, yeah. What happened to you? Yeah, I was going to say, your face, your face looks like it, it's been in an egg bag. Hey, my girls don't care about... Hey, listen. They know. They know I'm the greatest. They know that Ric Flair is no longer the number one dude around here. You know, I had to stay in the back seat long enough. But now I'm in the driver's seat. I've got all the controls, you understand? They're not worried about this little... Here, you know, Ric Flair is such a dirty wrestler, he tried to tear my eye out. You know something? It's going to be a long time before Ric Flair does that again because I'm not going to give him a match. You understand? Oh, he doesn't deserve a match. I've got too many other contracts coming up like in San Francisco, and Chicago, Toronto, wherever, you know. He was man enough to give you a match, Greg. Well, I'll tell you, you what, he never, the only time he gave me a match, Bob Cottle, the only time he gave me a match is after I broke his nose. I had to break his nose to get a United States title match. And as soon as I got it, you see it right here. Proof of the pudding. That means that I'm the, the better man, that I'm the greatest. Just ask Heidi right here, who's the greatest. He is the greatest. What about it? Definitely the greatest. <laughs> There's at least two opinions and a third. Hey, Greg, you're, you're absolutely right, Bob Carroll. That's two opinions. All the girls in the world think that way. They're, they're tired of this. So, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I hear the old time. Right or wrong, huh? You are going to sit here and tell the whole world that Valentine's the greatest? Hey, don't insult no, me. I'm not insulting. They're very lovely. Valentine, I give you credit. I threw her number away last year. You are going to sit here and tell the public Valentine's the greatest? Bob Cottle, I want to show you something, Major. I don't want to disturb anybody. <laughs> I tell you, Flair slug Valentine into the ring. David, he's tearing that tuxedo he right off sure of him. I think he's giving him his opinion of what he thinks of Greg Valentine. He's ripped the coat off. He's ripped. Oh, the, he's gonna rip that. Yes, he is. He got. He's so taken down to the bare skin. He's taking him down. All right. Got him un completely undressed in the ring. Ripping the shirt. The fans, the fans love it. I tell you, 
Yes, his girls are staying over here, sort of.